Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your spirit messages for December. This is Mary, this is Leo Sunlight Insight. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. If you're new, welcome returning. Thank you so much for coming back. So this is what does spirit want you to know at this time. I do consider all the readings on my channel timeless, even though they're dated. So if you'd like to go back and watch past playlists, uh, past, past videos, please, please feel free to do that. Um, links are below in the description box for all Sagittarius playlists. So Sagittarius, welcome in. Welcome in, everybody. Happy December. Happy Merry Early Christmas for those who celebrate Christmas. So let's see what Spirit wants you to know at this time. Sagittarius, um, we're going to get three Oracle cards from each deck, and then we'll clarify each card with the Tarot card to give a little more uh, insight into the message. So let's see what Spirit wants. I'm feeling these two stuck together in my hand, and they didn't want to release, so... Spirits like those, those. Okay, let's see one more. Sagittarius. All right. So we have the earth magic. We have the spirit um, messages there. And this deck is the work your light. And then we have the Jonathan, Jonathan D. Tarot. So like I said, all the decks are listed below in the description box. Tons of stuff there. So please feel free to check out... Um, description box if you'd like to reach out for personal reading um donate to the channel or anything like that tons of stuff down there all right let's get three of these and then we'll see what your messages are and then we'll clarify with the tarot what are the spirit messages for Sagittarius at this time what do they need to know what does spirit want you to know at this time Sagittarius oh, I missed that one <laughs> popped right up in my face I'm like okay all right one more for Sagittarius one more for Sagittarius all right let's see what we have here and we have Meadow Vulnerability. So this is opening up to new things, opening yourself up to be vulnerable, whether it's could be anything in your life, could be to a relationship, it could be to uh, something new, trying something new, uh, and not being afraid to do that. Karma, DNA. So, all right, I may read a little bit from the book, and then we have Fairies, Earth, Magic. So this has been a big card coming out in all the readings so far. Um, and earth magic uh, could be in the spring uh, vulnerability here definitely reminds me of spring so something could be you could be coming to like a karmic completion in the springtime could be like a ve very like happy magical time come in the spring um, you know the DNA uh, karma here is all about like your ancestral path your lineage um, even something coming over from like past lives um, can be good karma, can be bad karma, and it also can be about really thinking if it's not so good karma, how can I break these patterns, what can I do, what can I change uh, to break the cycle that's either been going on, it could be since like your great 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 grandparents or something like that, like, you know, if it was a certain issue and it seems to, you know, bleed down in every single um, generation, then there may be something that maybe you can do to help break that um karmic pattern and it may be you know being open and vulnerable to things you've never done before to make these changes so whatever that means for you in the earth magic here can be about just being um in tune in touch with you know the earth and nature and that kind of energy um and i remember in the book it says you know to really um connect with all living beings you know plants trees animals all that kind of energy so and it also a lot about like getting your hands in the dirt and doing that sort of thing so if you've ever wanted to like plant a garden plant a tree or do anything like that I'd say or work like out in the earth <laughs> then I would say do it you know maybe not till spring obviously you can't do it now if it's you know it's snowing right here now so um I'm in the northeast of the United States so it's snowing right here now so I think, I think uh, something here in the spring, if you're open and vulnerable to something here, you may actually close a karmic cycle or you could change the pattern of karmic cycles here. 
Um, and it's going to be like a whole new time here, like a very magical time. You know, in the earth in the spring is when everything grows, it flourishes, um, and it's all about growth, expansion. So really expanding yourself out and being open, like this open meadow, to new ways of growth. So I know we'll clarify with the tarot. So let's see after. So we have you're already doing it. Stop overthinking. Keep face keep facing your true north. So whatever you're doing is telling you to keep doing it and stop overthinking. Whatever you want to do or whatever you're doing, um, it's just to go with the flow. Just keep working at it. Keep doing it. And just stop stressing yourself out, overthinking that kind of energy because you're already walking that path. And you may not see like how the end is how the end is going to be. You know what's going to happen, but it says here you're already doing it. So just stop overthinking it and just keep facing true north. And that kind of reminds me, I don't know why Spirit's making me uh, think of the North Node. If you know anything about astrology, I'm not an astrologist, but the North Node is all about going after your life mission, your life purpose, and, keep, and you know, keeps you moving forward to move forward in the next direction. So I think you're going in the right direction. Just um, don't give up and don't like stress and overthink about it. And then we have here Lemuria, creating heaven on earth. It's happening. So something here, you can create your own heaven on earth. There's something here um, that you could create. Um, you can make it happen to have this heaven on earth, whether it's a uh, change in lifestyle, a new relationship, a new job, uh, uh, going on vacation to a place you've never been before, or just being, you know, lifting up your spirits, being in a higher vibration and being in a more happy energy can create this heaven on earth. And then we have priestess. How are you being called to step up and lead? And the priestess energy here, you know, I think of the high priestess like in tarot, someone who's very spiritual, attuned and in touch. And I do know like a lot of readers on YouTube, a lot of them are Sagittarians. So you may have that gift and not even know it. Um, if you feel very intuitive or have that gut inkling, that knowing and like, I don't, but you're not sure. Um, it could be, you know, that you do, and maybe it's time to really tap in to that energy. Or, you know, this is telling you if it's not that, step up and lead. How are you being called to step up and lead? So whatever you feel like you need to do or lead in, <laughs> whatever that means for you, it's probably telling you here that you should probably take action on that. All right. Let's see what we have here. We have reach out. We know you're reaching out right now for help due to a current situation. Support as is as much about physical act of accepting help where offered as it is about the emotional benefits and learning that is truly okay to accept support however it's presented to you. So, you know, this could be you reaching out to somebody, reaching out for help, just reaching out that it's okay to do that, to reach out. And it's okay to accept help and to accept people reaching out to you. If you're someone who's very independent and you're like, I don't need any help, you know, I'm fine. But Spirit's like, no, if you feel like you need to reach out, you need help, you or just need to reach out to someone in general for whatever reason, then Spirit wants you to know that you probably should if you've been thinking about it. And then we have trust. While your logical mind is dictating a supposedly clear direction, your soul's inner guidance is urging you to follow an alternative path. The logical path may be one that you consider safe and more familiar, but you could be missing out on boundless opportunities and so much more. So some of you may actually have trust issues, which makes it hard for you to reach out to people for some reason. And Spirit wants you to know it's okay to trust and reach out. All right, and then we have love. Love is the foundation of your existence. And you're just as worthy of, of receiving as you are of giving love and compassion. While love can be a beautiful emotion, it's equally a form of energy that propels you through life. So I, I feel like here, if I put these three together, some of you are not trusting, are not trusting about reaching out to somebody. And it could be about love here because these just kind of like go right together like, 
really needing to like really learn how to trust again and to reach out and if it's about love or a person spirit wants you to know it's it's okay to reach out wow so okay so i feel like um kind of have three separate messages here so i guess like i said take what messages resonate for you and take them in which way they resonate for you and i got a card upside down here and um they may not resonate with every single person so please keep that in mind all right so sagittarius i do ask if you like my energy how i read my style please do like share subscribe comment love to read the comments if you subscribe hit the bell and um you won't miss out on any readings i do four readings a month and they're all different so don't miss out on that and if you do thank you so much all right let's get three more here for sagittarius to clarify these cards sagittarius please thank you so much one more nope there's two there okay and this one Okay, let's see what the overall energy is on the bottom of the deck. So the tower here. So, you know, this can't doesn't always have to be bad. It can be good. It can be bad. It can just be a little bit of a shakeup. So definitely here, something could have been shake, shooken up a little bit here. There could have been a big epiphany, realization, a surprise, a good surprise, maybe a bad surprise. Something could have came crumbling down here also. And there could have been an ending or a new beginning, however that resonates for you. All right, so a lot of different meanings with the tower. So if you've just recently had a big surprise or you may be expecting a, excuse me, a big surprise, then you take it as that. If you had a big epiphany or realization about something, someone or a situation, then it could mean that. If something just ended or crumbled down or there was a big shakeup, then that could also mean that also. So however the tower resonates for you, but that's the main energy now for the tarot. So let's see. So we have being vulnerable here, the wheel of fortune, and that's our energy, Sagittarius. So I feel like being open and vulnerable to new things, new circumstances, uh, something here maybe you've never done, or you're being, you know, maybe you're not trusting to be vulnerable in a situation, but the wheel is here to tell you that it's probably something divinely guided for you, meant to be, that it's better luck, it's better fate, it's better fortune, it's divine timing, uh, divine fate. And things going in a better direction you know just need to be open to be vulnerable and this wheel will start to turn in the right direction and only good things can come from that so let's see what this dna karma is about so we got the five of swords so the five of swords is a very egocentric getting ahead at all costs kind of energy so if you've had like lineage or uh, you know, your ancestry and knew there was not good energy, like there were not some good people, they did some bad things to get ahead, uh, you know, they were rich because they did this, they did that, it kind of leaked down from generation to generation, and now you're like, you know what, I don't want to be a part of this, um, you know, that it's okay to break these karmic uh, patterns here, you know, if you don't want to be in that five of swords energy. You know, whatever it is here, I'm, I'm getting like, um, I don't know, I'm thinking like Goodfellas Godfather, but I mean, it doesn't have to be that, but something where, you know, maybe there's not some good history in your DNA, your karma from like your ancestors, your lineage, and you're like, you're really not going to follow, not following in that pattern, not following um, that line of karma kind of energy there that's what I'm getting with that it's like the sword you can use this big sword here right in the middle to cut away things no longer serving you telling the truth telling it like it is standing up for yourself and it doesn't have to be a bad thing I mean maybe you know your family came from a long line of doctors and you're like you know what? I don't want to do that so it's like bra breaking that karmic pattern or everybody was a lawyer and you're like well I don't want to do that either so it's like breaking that karmic pattern and it doesn't have to be something negative um so now we have here earth magic with the eight of swords so you know the eight of swords is an energy now we're getting a lot of swords so that's a lot of mind uh has to do with the mind thought that kind of energy so eight of swords about being mentally trapped in your head can't get out of your own thoughts out of your own way but i feel like here um 
you know, getting out in nature and really um, getting in tune and touch with nature, uh, maybe going for walks, going for hikes, going by the river, the ocean, um, hiking, I don't know, whatever here will help to clear your mind, help to get you out of this um, mental like fog and entrapment and also like taking up gardening or getting your hands dirty, getting them in the soil and just connecting with that energy and like grounding yourself, I think will help to um, clear away these mental blocks. Sounds silly, but that's kind of the um, energy I'm getting with that. Ah, I just need a drink. Okay, so let's see here. We have, you're already doing it. Stop overthinking. As with the Eight of Swords, it's all about overthinking. So keep facing your true north. So the Seven of Pentacles here, you know, is waiting patiently. You invested time, you invested resources, you know, and now you're just waiting for the fruits of, fruits of your harvest. So this is like patiently waiting, assessing um, kind of energy. So even though it may be a period of waiting and, you know, investing and waiting and not really seeing results yet, it's like, stop overthinking it. Like they say, a watched pot doesn't boil, a watched plant isn't going to grow. So <laughs> um, just keep doing what you're doing and facing the true north. Like plants always grow northwards. So things are going in the right direction, even though you may not be seeing it. So just keep doing what you're doing and stop overthinking it. It could have been a wise investment here. Or maybe you're not sure. Like, did I do the right thing? Am I investing wisely? Um, spirit's like, yes, just stop overthinking. All right, so let's see what we have here. So we have Lemuria creating heaven on earth. It's happening. This is the hermit. So the hermit kind of goes within, withdraws, you know, spends some time alone, does that inner journey work, uh, soul reflection, you know, soul work here, finds their inner guidance, their way, their light, uh, finds our own path. So maybe, you know, some of you have been kind of like a hermit, like could have been, could be a hermit, you know, just spending too much time alone, being in your house, not going out, but you can create your heaven on earth. Some of you, I feel like just need to get away, go on vacation, go somewhere you've never been, even if it's going to the next uh, few towns over and visiting some place that you've never been or whatever, just getting out of the, like this hermit energy and go visit someplace nice, do something good for yourself. It's kind of the energy I'm getting with that. All right, so now we have Priestess. How are you being called to step up and lead? So the Four of Cups is about boredom, uh, complacency. Um, it's my blah card, it's just like, it's just blah. It's like, you're just bored, you know, with life in general, so so you may need to step up and lead in some way to get out of this boredom. You know, take that first step. You know, if it's not leading, you know, other people, just yourself. Like, what can I do to get myself out of this bored energy, this boredom that I'm experiencing right now? It could be anything. You know, just taking the lead and taking the first steps to do something else, to change your trajectory, to change your fate, your destiny, your boredom, and just getting out of that energy. All right, so let's see what we have here. Reach out, the Six of Pentacles. So, you know, Six of Pentacles is all about equal give and take, uh, balance. So it's okay to reach out, and I feel like it'd be well, well received, it'd be very balanced energy. So if you're thinking about reaching out to somebody or somebody's reaching out to you and you don't know what to do, I feel a very balanced, practical um, kind of good energy from that. So don't be afraid to reach out for help or reach out to somebody you've been thinking about reaching out to, whatever it may be. I think it'd be well received and well balanced, equal exchange here. So it's a good energy. All right. So what do we have here with trust? We have the four of swords. So yeah, you know, you may have been through things in the past here with the four of swords energy. Four of swords is all about you know, healing, thinking, contemplating, spending time alone. So, you know, maybe you went through things in the past that you've had to heal over, think about, and maybe, you know, it's really affected your trust and people, places, things, circumstances here. But I think Spirit wants you to know it's okay to open up your heart and trust again. Whatever, you know, however that means for you. And we have love and we have the Queen of Wands. So 
And this is your energy. Fire, Queen of Wands is Leo Sag Aries. So, I mean, this could just be you having self-love for yourself. You know, self-value, self-worth, self-love. Loving yourself first before you can love somebody else. And uh, being in that fiery, passionate, go-getter kind of energy. You know, going after what you want. A lot of drive, passion, and ambition. And just being in a loving space. Or it could be reaching out to somebody else who is in this energy also. So that's kind of what I'm getting with that. All right, Sagittarius, those are your messages. And I hope some of them resonated for you. And uh, good luck to you. And I'm sending you many light, love, and blessings. And as I always say with my channel, is to always, always shine your light.